Where is the market headed into Q4 of 2024? Here for Central Oregon Real Estate. That's what today's video is all about. It's gonna be the September version of our monthly market update video that we do every single month here on this channel. So if you're curious to know where the market is headed over the next three months, heading into 2025, stick around. We're getting after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel or your 50th, doesn't matter to me, and you want to know everything there is to know about living, eating, sleeping, working, playing, the good with the bad of living in Bend and surrounding Central Oregon, then subscribe to the channel, tap that notification bell below so you can be the first to know about the current market happenings here in Bend and Central Oregon. My name's Ryan. I've lived in Bend for over 30 years. Zach and I, we get calls and texts every day from people just like you looking for help with their next real estate transaction. So whether you're selling it, whether you're buying something here locally, whether you're relocating from out of the area, it doesn't matter to us. Whether you're doing that in the next nine days or 90 days or beyond that, that also doesn't matter. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, set up a Zoom. If you're local, then we can go get coffee somewhere and talk about your situation to figure out what the next course of action would be regarding your transaction. So with that being said, we're hopping into the monthly market update video. We just got our data that was released here a couple days ago as it relates to Bend and Central Oregon real estate. Obviously, it's a very hot area, very, very active, and there's always stuff going on. So it's important that we keep up to speed as to what's going on with the current state of the market, especially as we are expecting certain Fed interest rates to start to taper backwards for the first time in four years as they've been progressing forward for the previous four years. So very interesting um, developments going on right now in the general landscape. What is that going to do to interest rates for mortgage? And what is that going to do to the local real estate market here in Central Oregon? So let's just jump in right now and we'll cover all that stuff in today's video. I'm going to share my screen and we will just get off to the races. We've got our Beacon Report up here. This is provided by the Beacon Appraisal Group. Every single month it comes out about the first week of the new month. What we're looking at now is Bend and Central Oregon Real Estate as it relates to the data, the volume of sales, the price per square foot, uh, the, the median home price, all that information that may be of interest to you, especially if you're looking at getting into the market in some capacity, whether you're selling, whether you're buying, whether you're relocating, it doesn't matter really. It's important that you know this, especially if you're kind of getting into the market. Uh, to give you the best advantage possible when moving forward. Right now, this is our median home price in Bend. We came down considerably from the months before that as we go into the fall season. $706,000 for a single family residence is the current median home price in Bend. If we look back the month before, we were at seven forty nine, dollars and the month before that, in uh, June of 2024, we were at 775. That's more of our local high for the year. We scale back to a previous summer back in 2023, July of 2023. That's our ultimate all-time high in Bend, $800,000 for a single family residence. Pretty interesting. This data goes all the way back, especially this sheet here, 36 months, and then it can actually continue even further back. Uh, but this just provides context. This is where we've been the last 36 months. This is kind of the tail end or the, uh, the middle of that COVID boom. And you can see that prices just kind of started to really scale up. And they've come down here and there. Obviously, they come down a little bit every uh, once in a while, but then they'll kind of taper back up. And so we're, uh, we're in the sevens. It seems like that's a pretty healthy number in terms of where we're at and kind of like solidified. We'll be there for the significant future, it feels like, at, at a minimum. It could taper back below 700 going into the later fall and early winter. But um, I think seven is kind of the barometer now in terms of like where Ben's median price is going to remain at, especially if interest rates do come down. I know we're expecting some announcements from the Fed this week. And so that could really uh, shake things up. I think it'll be kind of a slow role when it comes to mortgage rates adjusting to anything like say a fed basis point rate dip as opposed to a hike that we've been dealing with for the last four years it'll be the first reduction in four years so very interesting news right now from a from an economic standpoint if we scroll down a little bit this is going to give us our number of sales that we've had um, in the last month, as well as dating back to 36 months. What we notice here going or leaving the 2021 year was that we had a, a significant 
a uh, significantly higher volume of actual monthly transactions going on with real estate locally. And uh, when interest rates really shot up, that was designed to really slow the market down. What we did notice was in 2022 versus 2023, there was a reduction in transactions going into 2023 by a thousand total transactions here in the Central Oregon area. That is a significant number of transactions that did not happen. And that was all by design. Prices didn't really adjust but transaction volume certainly did. So you can see that over here in 2021 20, um, and 2022. But if we really kind of scale back more locally, we have um, 148, 143, and it's just kind of hovering in that range. But you can notice that there's a significantly lower volume of transactions happening in the last 12 months, 18 months here in the Bend area versus going back four years. And that was by design. Will that change? maybe there's a lot of people on the sidelines right now waiting for that perfect moment to jump into the market there is no such thing as a perfect moment but there are good moments and generally speaking when people do buy real estate in the bend and central oregon area and they hold it for the long term they feel good about the purchase that they made looking back maybe not in the moment when they sign and they decide to get the keys or they get the keys that day and when they close but like if you look back after having done that um, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. Generally speaking, people are very happy with the purchase they made, especially if they're investing for the long term. Now, let's scroll down here. Let's continue on. Here's our days on market. If homes are priced appropriately, especially in Bend, uh, they tend to go pretty quickly. There's still some uh, homes that do get listed a little bit high, and so they tend to sit on the market. But you can see here, we've in the, in the last six months, we've even had homes that have uh, gone in less than 10 days or 10 days or less. Um, and that is our median days on market. That's a very telling figure as to where the prices are, what type of activity we're dealing with. You can see if we uh, we scale back to like 2021, we're coming out of this little crazy period where we had probably 12 months straight of less than 10 days on the market. And we finally got back up in November of 2021, over 10 days on the market, but then it came back down and it, there was a frenzy again. So um, interesting things for sure in this area, in this market, but we're uh, back to more of a healthy uh, days on market 25 is a little bit better obviously it, it certainly makes it more balanced um, and that's something that we're trying to look for when it comes to the state of the real estate market we'll continue on we have building permits here this is information that you can kind of pause and look at if it's of interest to you but this gives you an idea as to uh, how many building permits are taken out on a monthly basis 36 38 June was a big month, 78, of course, but it just kind of gives you an idea. You can go ahead and scale back 36 months. Cash versus um, conventional transactions. This gives you some more perspective as to what type of transactions are actually happening here in the Central Oregon area. And then months of supply. This is a big one. This one matters a lot. Uh, this tells you how balanced the market is. This is two straight months of four months or more of supply. And it's also four months straight of three months of supply or more. So hopefully that's not a tongue twister for you, but it makes sense. Um, we need more inventory on the market to have a balanced market. If you look back over the last three years alone, two months uh, was the most that we had. But if you even look back down in this area, less than a month of inventory. And if it's if this uh, chart were to scale back even further, we'd be looking at less than a month of inventory during all of basically 2021 and the, fir the second half of 2020. So a very lopsided market that was swaying in one direction. We're kind of getting back to more of a balance, which is what we need. Four months is a solid number. Um, and we, we prefer to be in this range. We want to have a healthy market for both buyers and sellers. And that's what we're looking at with, um, the current state of the market's inventory. Now, if we continue on what we're going to do, this is our median uh, price per square foot. You can just pause that. If you want to look at that, it's pretty steady, uh, in the low threes up to the high threes, but it's in the, in the, in the three hundreds. And that's been where it's at and been, if we go down here now, what we're going to see, our total transactions over the last three years, basically, or 12 months. Um, and this will give you some perspective as to what price ranges 
they fall into. We scroll down, we're getting into Redmond now. Okay, we do a lot of volume, a lot of transactions in Redmond. And that's something that we certainly want to continue to emphasize is because Redmond is growing at a very, very fast rate. And it's a very boom in town, just like Ben does. Doesn't get the notoriety that Ben does, but it's important that we continue to educate our viewers on the state of the market in Redmond as well. Median price in Redmond's 495. And this is the first time in some time, several months, almost a year, in which the median price dipped below 500,000. So that was a big deal, um, but it's been in the five range minimum for a long time. So Redmond's certainly growing up. It's starting to catch up to Bend a little bit. It's still a little bit behind. There's still great value to have in Redmond, but you can certainly get a fantastic view of the mountains for a considerably less price point than in Bend. So it's something to consider if you're looking for mountains, if you're looking for the outdoors, if you're looking just to be in Central Oregon in general. Why not consider Redmond? There's great value to be had over there. So let's continue on. Number of sales. Redmond's of a town of about 40,000 people. And so you're going to have a considerably less number of total sales. Uh, I think it's what, one third in that range of what Bend had, 148 last month. We're sitting at 56 here. 88 the previous month. That's pretty good. I mean, that's that's definitely a local high if you scale back. 18 months or so. I mean, the last time Redmond had over 100 transactions in a month was March of 2022. So it's been over two years uh, since we had volume like that. But 88, that was pretty good for the month before. So Redmond is definitely booming. There's a lot of activity in Redmond. If we continue on on days on market, similar to the Bend charts, what we're going to see here is 31. Bend was at 25. And so most homes, many homes are priced appropriately. Uh, there is inventory, so it's going up. This also is a contributor to why uh, days on market tends to increase over the course of time if there's more and more inventory available and um, for buyers to choose from. But, you know, 31 days, that's getting back into the healthy dose or the healthy range. But what we see here, if we scale back two, three years, we're in the same ballpark as Ben in terms of uh, minimal days on market when it came to homes coming onto market. Very lopsided market at the time, cash versus conventional transactions, builder permits, 35. Okay, that's kind of in the same ballpark as Bend for the last month. And then we have inventory. Okay, four months. This is the first time uh, in over three years that both Bend and Redmond have four months of supply at the same time. Very interesting developments here. Uh, it's becoming more of a healthy market in all of Central Oregon. So that's something that bodes well for anybody looking to jump into the market. Interest rates, are they coming down? They've kind of come down a little bit from where they were a year ago. We were sitting at 8% last November. Now we're at maybe six and a half. Are they going to come down some more? I would, I would speculate that if they do kind of come down and slip below five that could bring a lot of people out of the woodworks because there are so many people sitting on the sidelines right now with golden handcuffs wanting to sell their home or they're waiting for that perfect moment to make a purchase which doesn't exist i need to reiterate that perfect moments to make a purchase just don't exist there's no such thing as a perfect time to market um, just look at the people in finance that try to time the stock market. Um, anyway, so here we go. Median sale price per square foot is $299. I think Ben was in the mid threes this month. Let's continue on. There's other towns in Central Oregon that we need to cover. Sisters, eh, Sun River, Lapine, Jefferson County, and Crook County. Okay, obviously smaller markets, but we certainly serve. Sisters is a great town of about 5,000 people in the western part of Deschutes County at the bay at the foothills of the Cascade Mountains. Um, $625,000 for a median home price. Now, we need to be very considered... Uh, just consider why and where these numbers come from. There's not a lot of sales that happen every month, right? There's nine sales. So there's a couple ranches out there in Sisters that are being sold for five, 10, 20 million. So imagine if the $20 million ranch sells next month and then there's only 10 other sales. Well, then the median home price in Sisters for one month will be like 2.2 million, right? So <laughs> just got to have perspective about it. But 625 based off of nine sales, days on market, uh, five. So interesting, current inventory is five months. They have a, a lot of inventory, but yet only five days on market. Hmm, kind of a head scratcher there. That's interesting. If we continue on, we have Sun River over a million. Every now and then, the median home price in Sun River 
slips up over a million. And that's based off of 12 sales, 27 days on market with five months of inventory. Lapine, over 400,000 again. Interesting. Sometimes they kind of teeter back and forth uh, around the $400,000 mark. But at 433 with 10 sales, 64 days on market and seven months of inventory. That's okay. Starting to get built out over in Lapine. We need to sell some homes over there. Uh, Jefferson County's Madras, 368. We've got 13 total sales. Days on market is 44, six months of inventory. Prineville, uh, this, was, this is going to be Prineville over here, Crook County, 448,000, 18 sales. Prineville's got about 12,000 people. And then Crook County probably has about 20,000 total in their county. Um, that gives you some perspective. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a boom in place too. We've got some videos that we put out that um, are popular. Uh, some of the locals in Prineville don't like it so much. And so they let us know. But I mean, you know, Prineville's on the map now with some of those data centers and stuff like that. So uh, a booming town as well. Great spot to, to look if you're looking for a slower vibe, uh, a smaller town feel. Uh, but this basically wraps up the market update video for Bend and Central Oregon for the month of September. We're going into Q4 now. Uh, October 1st, we'll have one more quarter of the year. What happens in Q4, generally speaking? We still have some activity. It tends to slow down. Our interest rate's going to be following suit the Fed basis rate point cut. Is it going to happen right away or is it going to take a, a couple of months to adjust? Usually real estate kind of takes a little bit of time to adjust after something significant like whereas the stock market may already have it baked in or priced in based off the anticipation of, of rate cuts well we're looking at real estate and mortgage rates those tend to go a lot slower so we'll see what happens but I think the overall sentiment is optimism in terms of the, the, the mortgage rates coming down at some point. That could bring a lot of new people into the market as a, from a buyer standpoint. Could also be a really good time to list your home. So things to consider if you're watching this video to this point and you haven't yet liked it or subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really helps us out. And if you have any questions for us, reach out. It starts with you. You can call us, text us, email us. You can set up a Zoom call or we can just go get coffee if you're local somewhere. And we can talk about your situation to try and figure out what the best course of action is. My name's Ryan. I'm a licensed broker with eXp Realty. Thank you for watching this month's market update video. I will plan on seeing you guys on the next video.